Uh, Dave, we asked Ryan Nugent Hopkins earlier, what makes the orders more dangerous, having Leon with Connor on a line or having Leon at second line center with Nuge on the wing? And he said, both. How do you see that? Good answer. Both. Situational motivated. Both are, both are good options. And how do you think Ryan's season has gone, Nugent Hopkins' season has gone so far? You know, I don't think he's put up the numbers he would have liked offensively, but he's a solid player, touches a lot of parts of the game for us. He's a good penalty killer. He's obviously uh, a, a key part on that power play that's the number one power play in the league. So there's some good parts of it, but uh, I think he is, I think if you asked him, he would like his production numbers to be up a little bit. That's production five on five? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Next question, Bob Stoffer. Dave, do you look at uh, specific to Nugent Hopkins and uh, Yamamoto? I mean, they've been a little bit snake bit as well. The shooting percentages are yeah. down for both guys. You you kind of look at it and go, okay, you, you know, in terms of factory in scoring chances versus the conversion rate and that sort of thing. Yeah. With those guys. Yeah, you have to look at that a little bit because eventually it evens out. You know, you can go, you know, if you look at – Yamo, for instance, I mean, I think that stretch last year he was shooting 25%. You know that that's not going to be the case, and then he's uh, probably lower when he, than he, what he should be this year. So you're you're looking for it to uh, balance out at some point, and you know when you're when you're still getting the chances, if you're still getting the chances, eventually I think things will will uh, will even out for them. But uh, you know that being said, you also gotta you gotta work at getting the production you want. Can you uh, maybe just speak to the thought process the next two games? I mean, you might not play, uh, start the playoff playoff series till Wednesday, Thursday, who knows, next week. Yeah. But does that kind of factor in how you're going to deploy your personnel here over uh, tomorrow's game and uh, Saturday's game? Well, the reality is we switch in a lot of personnel in and out with a couple injuries. We don't, uh, between call-ups and uh, and salary cap issues you can't do a lot of fluctuation in and out <clears throat> so it's uh we'll look at it we've got a couple of bumps and bruises we're looking at right now that that uh, might tweak our lineup for tomorrow but we'll just we'll go game guy game and there's some people that uh you know you'd like to say okay do you want a game off but nobody nobody wants a game off they want to keep playing so we'll kind of manage it here the next couple of games and get through it and make sure everybody's as healthy as possible and uh, like you say, it probably won't start till Wednesday or Thursday, it sounds like. So um, we'll get a day off and then a couple good days of practice and get ready to go. Mark's back to your sports then. Hey, Dave. Um, back. So it, it appears back to the dry settle McDavid thing. It seems to me like you've been going back and forth and in and out. And are you are you pretty prepared now that you can flip the switch on that at a moment's notice in the playoffs if you decide that in mid-game or mid-series that you want to go from one option to the other that your team can pretty much seamlessly you know make the adjustments to make that happen that's the reason we've been doing it back and forth for a while to make sure that everybody it's it is seamless you you throw them together and and where you go and when they're when they're apart it's uh it's you still have that rhythm in your lineup. Those are things that we've talked about for a long time now, and you know our team. Uh, I think our team recognizes that that there's situations where both can be an advantage. Right. So I guess we've all asked you a million times, "What do you like better?" You know, and it seems to me that it's not about what you like better. It's about no. It's situation. It's situational motivated. Right? Can you, can you, I mean, I don't know, you probably won't let us in. I'd love to know what flips that switch for you, you know? What, <laughs> what is it that makes you change your mind on that? Sometimes it's situational in a game, too, you know? You're just, your things aren't going the way you like. You want to change the rhythm. There's matchup stuff. I mean, there's a lot of factors that come into it, but it's, uh, sometimes it's how each of the guys are playing or how the people that are playing with them are playing. So there's, it, it it really is. It's not it's not like a game by game thing. You know, you you make the decision to start them one way or another, but it, the the ability to play them together is is situational. Alexander Gamal, NHL.com. 
today for our yeah. because of the rescheduled uh, game against Vancouver, you might have a couple of days uh, less of a break than other teams. In your experience, is there sort of a sweet spot um, between uh, giving your guys enough rest and not losing your rhythm in the yeah. number of days? Yeah, there is. You don't want, I don't think you want to be off too long. You know, you especially when you're going into playoffs. If if you have a week off, that's you know you're you're anxious to get going. You're uh, it becomes a long week. So with us playing Saturday, I, I think that's that's fine. If we play Wednesday or Thursday, it gives us a couple days, one day of rest and a couple days of repair, which is fine. So um, you know, I like where our schedule is right now. It's not not uh, not too long, and uh, it gives you enough time to prepare. Tony Brower, others TV. Afternoon, Dave. Afternoon. Yesterday, with the win, uh, your team improves to 25-1-2 when leading after two periods of play. Why is it that your club is so effective holding on to the lead? I think we play fairly sound. You know, there's situations that uh, that we talk about a lot that you, you have to have in place to close games out and be strong and holding the lead, and I think our team's done a pretty good job of that. But that being said, there's always room for improvement. There's things that you get in a game and you uh, you want to take care of. You know, last night, if you look at it, we gave up uh, one goal. It's a tough goal for Koski, but we gave up another one that was offside that uh, when I looked at it again, it probably should have been a penalty down low in, in uh, Montreal's end. But you don't want to give out numbered breaks. You don't want to give any easy chances against. And... We've done a pretty good job of that, but that being said, there's still room for improvement. Now, in your two years here, uh, so I guess comparative to your first year here, how much growth have you seen in that department? Uh, I think every year you try to grow. You, you have different personnel, you know, a lot, some different personnel. So it's, uh, you know, you try to put a foundation in place that your your whole group understands and and recognizes when you have to play a certain way and uh, our group is you know both last year and this year has grown grown in those aspects Matson a couple of things Dave um, if Connor is your most valuable player and Leon is your second most valuable player what about a goaltender who is going to the playoffs as Mike Smith will be do you look at the last league game, which is going to be meaningless against Vancouver, and say, look, I don't need you to be playing this game. I want to make sure you get through the game. I don't need you with any bumps or bruises. It'll depend on what he wants to do to be ready to play. Okay. So you'll leave it up to him. Uh, there'll be a conversation between Dustin, myself, and, and Schmitty. Uh, and in terms of uh, Adam Larson, I don't know if I've seen Adam play better than he has the last couple of months. Is that the way you're, you're just pushing people off the pucks? Yeah. You know, the attackers are trying to get into the end. He just pushes them out of the way, moves the puck 10 feet, and the puck's up the ice. He's uh, He's been excellent all year, you know, and uh, the thing that he's he's played well himself, but he's helped people that have played with him also, and that's, uh, that's the, a real good trademark of a good solid player because we've had uh, he hasn't had a steady partner all year he's had Lagason he had uh, Chris Russell a little bit he had Jones a little bit now he's got Kulikov but everybody that goes with him seems like their game is is solid and that's a that's a great compliment to Larson how he's played and uh, the commitment he's put into doing things right for our team and he's he's had an excellent year I mean right from the start of the year he's been really good and, and one last thing on Cassian. How do you look at a player who hasn't played for a long time, but you know he brings something to the table in the playoffs, but this isn't like Brendan Gallagher who broke a, a thumb and can mm -hmm. stay in shape, you know, in terms of his, his, his legs and stuff. With yeah. Cassian's injury, it is his legs. So how yeah. do you weigh that in terms of, of getting him into, into a playoff game when this isn't like... Well, he's got to be. He's got to be 100% healthy. That's that's the thing. You can't put somebody in there that uh, is struggling skating. And the way he's going to get healthy, he's going to have to put the work in, like you say, with his legs before. And uh, and he's skating now. I mean, he's he's skating, but uh, 
we'll see where it, we'll see where it goes. But he's he, I've seen situations like this before where it's everybody's anxious to play in the playoffs, but you got to be you got to be able to play at playoff pace, and to that you have to be 100 percent 100 percent healthy. Scott Michael, six thirty, Chad. Just one for me, Dave, and it's just relates to this specific situation. Are you more receptive or I guess, do you solicit the player's opinions more weighted than your own, than normal when it comes to playing these last couple games? In other words, if you went to them and they said, coach, I want to play, like I, please don't sit me out. Are, are you, are you receptive to that and a little bit more malleable in this particular situation? I'm not asking anybody to sit out. So we dictate our lineup and, uh, you know, there might be conversations that somebody has a bump here, a bump there, or whatever. But that you that you want to make sure is all right. But we're not we're not soliciting people to sit out. That's uh, that's not what we're what we're doing here. We want people to keep playing. We want to keep rhythm of our group. And uh, you know, in a game, you can manage minutes and you can manage some situations. But we're not uh, we're, we're not out there saying. Would you like to play? Would you not like to play? There's, there's some situations where we might take a guy out because of a, an injury situation or that, but for the most part, we, we'd like to keep the rhythm in our lineup. Thanks. Yeah.